Hello students, welcome. So I am Dr. Mani Soni, your Dermatology faculty at Allen Next. And today we'll be discussing some previous year's questions. And these are very high yield questions. And these topics are sometimes repeated in the exams. So let us go ahead with this discussion. So in this first question, you can see that examiner is asking that a patient presented with multiple painful blisters. So multiple painful blisters on an erythematous base. Erythema means redness. So there is redness around these lesions along dermatome. Now this is very important dermatome because nerves are supplying various dermatomes. So along a particular nerve segment on the trunk as shown in the image, what is the diagnosis? So patient here has presented with these red multiple painful fluid filled lesions that is blisters and they are along a particular nerve segment that is dermatome and they are only on one side as you can see in the image they are only on one side only on this side and not on the other side so unilateral dermatomal multiple grouped painful vesicles or blisters are features of correct it is feature of shingles that is herpes zoster, herpes zoster, which is caused by reactivation of varicella zoster virus, varicella zoster virus, which causes chicken pox. Now, why the answer is not herpes simplex? Because herpes simplex is not necessarily along a particular dermatome. It is caused by herpes simplex virus, but not varicella zoster virus it is caused by herpes simplex virus one which causes labialis and herpes simplex virus two which causes genitalis now why this is not molluscum contagiosum because molluscum contagiosum presents with asymptomatic not painful pearl shaped doom shaped papule which looks like a pearl so pearly papule with central umbilication this is very characteristic of molluscum contagiosum and the fourth one is chicken pox so remember this is not again dermatomal it can be present over whole body even a scalp can get involved and they have centripetal distribution and these are also vesicles but there is some prodromal features present like fever malaise which might be there in the history Coming to the next question, here they are saying that velvety hyperpigmentation, that is darkening. So there is velvety hyperpigmentation where over flexors, like here you can see over axilla, that is flexural areas, it is present. Patient is also suffering from diabetes and diabetes is one predisposing factor for which hyperpigmentary disorder? Yes, acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans generally present in a similar fashion that is velvety, dirty looking, dark, hyperpigmented lesions which are generally present over folds that is flexural areas like neck folds, axilla or groin. So this is a case of acanthosis nigricans. This is not Becker's nevus because Becker's nevus have hypertrichosis that is thick hair follicles. This is not lichen planus because lichen planus also can leave behind pigmentation but initially there are lesions which have five P's that is plain purple polygonal pruritic papules. Also there is a type which is known as lichen planus pigmentosus but it is not necessarily occurring over flexural areas or only involving the folds. So that's why it is not lichen planus and it is not erythrasma. Why? Because erythrasma generally is a bacterial infection which presents with a rash though the site is commonly axilla so it can present over axilla but whenever erythrasma is there you will be uh, getting a, a finding which is very characteristic that is on wood slam coral red colored fluorescence is seen okay so not necessarily this is dark in color it is a rash while here there is hyperpigmentation so that's why the answer is acanthosis nigricans coming to the next question they are saying identify the disorder depicted in the image so this question was once asked and in the image what was given there was a female having this depigmented patch or depigmented area over center of forehead so mahilayen center of forehead par kya lagati hain so females what they apply over center of forehead yes bindi and behind bindi to stick it there is adhesive and this adhesive can have a chemical and that chemical is para tertiary butyl phenol 
and this chemical when it comes with contact with the skin it can lead to whitening of the skin that is leucoderma leuco means white derma means skin and this whitening of the skin is due to contact to this chemical so that's why this is known as contact leucoderma so here the answer is contact leucoderma because this white skin is present specifically over this area now vitiligo pibaldism and albinism which are the other three options can also present with white skin but that is not the answer why because you have to specifically look at the pattern because here the white lesion is only present over the center of the forehead where the patient is applying something and else everything is normal whole skin is perfectly normal unlike albinism where whole skin becomes depigmented even the hair follicles become depigmented that is white and patient may have photophobia as well in pibaldism it is present since birth and it is generally present over frontal scalp associated with white forelocks and in vitiligo the most common type is vitiligo vulgaris where bilaterally symmetrical depigmented lesions are present so here the answer is contact leucoderma coming to the next question so in this question they are asking that one year old child so this is in a young child presented with eczematous dermatitis dermatitis so they have told you that there is inflammation of the skin where over face and here over face you can see that there is inflammation there is redness and his mother has history of bronchial asthma mother have history of bronchial asthma very important finding and this is suggestive of which condition what is the diagnosis and the diagnosis is atopic dermatitis why because atopic dermatitis can very easily be diagnosed by two major and two minor criteria there are there is a criteria for making the diagnosis of atopic dermatitis which is known as hennepin and rachka criteria and if you look at the four major criteria you will find that this is a very itchy condition it is a very chronic condition there is always or in majority of the cases family history of atopy is present as you can see here that mother having history of asthma is there and the common sites involved in adults is flexors but in young children like infants because they crawl so their extensors can also get involved their flexors can get involved and even their face can get involved okay so in infants other sites can get involved so you can see that face involvement is seen in atopic dermatitis family history of atopy is present and because there is dermatitis there is inflammation so there is redness so all these are the features which are suggestive of atopic dermatitis in airborne contact dermatitis remember that it is due to a plant parthenium so this is commonly seen in gardeners or farmers and it occurs over exposed areas seborrheic dermatitis generally occur over seborrheic areas and in infants the common presentation is in the form of cradle cap that is very oily or greasy scaling over scalp this is the common finding and in infective eczematous dermatitis there is always infection and because there is infection what you will get you will get pustules or pus present okay and because it is infective there might be other symptoms like fever or increased leukocyte count in the investigation or so such clues are mentioned then you should think of infective eczematous dermatitis so that's why the answer here is atopic dermatitis in this last question they are saying that which of the following statement is false about anatomy of skin now in the anatomy of skin you will find that there is collagen which is present in dermis so this dermal collagen which is seen and collagen is the most abundant fibers which are present in dermis and they are mainly of type 1 and type 3 so type 1 and type 3 fibers are present and their ratio is approximately 8 is to 1 and not 3 is to 1 so this is the wrong statement and that's why this becomes the answer that is this is the false statement now if we see the next option they are saying that skin weighs around 15% of the body weight 
yes this is correct and skin is considered as the largest organ of the body and it weighs around 15 percent of the body weight epidermis is derived from ectoderm and dermis is derived from mesoderm exactly true and 90 percent of the cells in epidermis are keratinocytes yes because keratinocytes are the majority of the cells which are present in epidermis and they are forming the epidermis almost 90 percent of them are keratinocytes so all these statements are true they are asking about the false statement and the false statement is this one so these were some previous year questions from dermatology and if you go through these previous years questions especially the topics from where these questions are being asked then it is high probability that you might get a similar topic or a similar question in your exam so that's why we have started this session that is a previous year question discussion i hope this was useful for all of you thank you very much all the very best